new post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Fancy, but let go of my neck. It is wonderful. Hey, you're choking me. Oh, oh, I'm sorry, Nick. <laughs> yeah, that's better. Look behind you. You can see all the way down to... Nick. What? That's George. All huh? alone in that car behind us. Great Scott, and he's hanging half out of the car. What's the matter with that guy? Nick, he's leaning way off. Look out, Patsy. Where, where are you going? I've got to get back there before we go around the next turn. It's too late, Nick. You'll be killed. Now, the case of the Midway Murders. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter. Brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. It's a warm summer evening at the Idle Hour Amusement Park, and business is even better than usual. Hiya, hiya, hiya. Nick and Dickie right the whirlwind. The biggest, the fastest, the wildest roller coaster in the park. Excitement, chills, and mile a minute thrills. The scenic railway you'll never forget. Here they come again. Lift the turn every one. Only 20 pence for the flight of your life. That's the beauty and the beast. That's what we call the show, folks. A beauty and the beast. And it's starting right away. You'll see this lovely, delicate little lady, alone and single-handed, subdue the ferocious man-killing gorilla from the jungles of far-off Borneo. It's starting right away, so get your tickets now. Bongo, the most ferocious gorilla in captivity, and Lily Latour, the little lady who alone... Nick Carter speaking. Nick, uh, this is George Haley. Hey, where in the world are you, George? I thought you were coming down to my place for dinner. Uh, I'm in a phone booth at the Idle Hour Amusement Park, and I've got to talk fast. Uh, Nick, uh, can you get out here right away? Why, yes, but what's up? Uh, I'm no detective, Nick. I've got to have help. I've been following this guy ever since I recognized him on the bus on the way to your house. But I have to... Hey, wait a minute, wait a minute, George. Who are you following? Joe Lester. At least that was his name when he was in Bayside Penitentiary 12 years ago. I think he's working here at the park now. He's not a customer, that's for sure. Hold on, George, you're going too fast. What's this all about? I want you to find out if he's the man I think he is and what he's doing now. It's terribly important to me, Nick. Okay, I'll get there as fast as I can. How'll I find you at the park? Uh, wait for me by the whirlwind. The what? The roller coaster. I may be late, Nick, but I'll be there. I'll be there for sure. <laughs> Five times is enough. After this one, we'll wait for George out front. Oh, Nick, it's so nice and dark in this tunnel. Well, no, it's too dark for my mother. Oh. I like to see things. The tunnel only lasts a minute. See? We're out of it already. Well, here we go up the first incline. I'm certainly glad we're not going to have those teenagers yelling in our ears again this trip. <laughs> yes. I guess we have the car to ourselves this time. Well, I wish George would hurry up and get here. You know, I wonder who this Joe Lester is that he's following, Nick. Well, George mentioned Bayside Penitentiary. He used to be a guard there, you know. Yeah, yeah, I know. Didn't he get into some kind of trouble? Yeah, he was accused of helping some of the convicts escape. George Haley? Oh, why, that's ridiculous. I know it is, but the evidence was against him, and all the escaping convicts were killed, so they couldn't testify in his favor. Oh, watch out, Nick. Here's the big dip. Oh! Hey, Patsy, let go of my neck. You're choking me. Oh! And look behind us. You can see all the way down to... Nick. What is it? There's George in the car behind us. What? Well, you're right, Patsy. He's half out of the car. He must have fainted. Oh, Nick, Nick, where are you going? I've got to get back to him before we go around that sharp turn. It's too late, Nick. You'll be killed. Oh! Oh, oh he's, he's gone. 
on next? Thrown right out of the car. He was out on the valley platform. Yeah, I saw it, too. It's a wonder he didn't hit somebody and kill him. That thing is a hundred foot high. Keep back, everybody, please. Let me through. Let me through here. Is there anything we can do, Nick? No, Patsy. He must have been killed instantly. It looks like every bone in his body broke. Golly. What happened here? Woody, what's the matter? Better ask Slim. The whirlwind is his concession. The guy from out of the car, Mr. Browden. Going around a height turn. Good grief. You the manager of this park? I'm the owner, John Browden. Are you the police? I'm a private investigator. My name's Nick Carter. The dead man was a friend of mine. Oh, nothing like this has ever happened before, Mr. Carter. Your friend must have been standing up in the no, car. No, he wasn't standing up. Can I talk to you and... Can I talk to the concession manager in your office? Why, certainly, of course. And you two, didn't you say you saw what happened? Yeah, I run the Beauty and Beast show right next to the Whirlwind. Lil, uh, Miss Latour here, we was out on the ballet platform... And you two the... come along to the office, please. All right. The park police can take care of things here until someone arrives from homicide. Homicide? Yes, Mr. Browden. I've called Sergeant Matheson. This was no accident. It was murder. <laughs> Folks, this is Sergeant Matheson of Homicide. Mr. Browden, the owner of the park, Matty. Oh, uh, Mr. Brown. How do you do, Sergeant? Slim Watson, who operates the roller coaster. Hi. Miss Lillian Sam. Latour, an animal trainer in the show next door. Miss Latour. Pleased to make your acquaintance. And Woody Reeves, who operates the show in which Miss Latour appears. Howdy. Uh, hello, Reeves. Uh, first of all, Matty, I'll tell you what I know. Patsy yeah, and I were in the same string of cars as the dead man when he was thrown off the roller coaster. Yeah. He's George ha Haley, a friend of my father's. Were you together when it happened, Nick? No, we were trying to find George. He was following a man who came out to the park on a bus about 8 o'clock. Someone George had known when he was a guard at Bayside State Penitentiary. How do you know that? Well, George phoned to ask Nick for help in finding out about the man. Uh, All George knew was that he was probably a park employee. You see, Patsy and I were supposed to meet him in front of the roller coaster, so we killed time by taking a few rides. Uh-huh. And then I looked back and saw George in the car behind us. The man must have been standing up, Sergeant. I tell you, we saw him, Mr. Browden, and he wasn't standing up. Okay, Nick, but uh, what makes you think it was murder? Well, Matty, the body was badly smashed up. And? But not the back of the head. And I found blood there. Well, naturally, after such a fall as that... It was dried blood, Mr. Browden, from a blow that had been struck some time before he fell out of the roller coaster. And now, wait a minute, Nick. Uh, the guy might have had some accident you didn't know about. No, Matty, that was the blow that killed him. Otherwise, it would have raised a lump the size of a hen's egg. And there was no swelling at all. What are you talking about? A medical fact, Mr. Browden. Swelling does not take place after death. Right. And he must have been riding around in that thing dead ever since he was slugged. Oh, no, he wasn't, Sarge. I collect tickets before every ride. And I'm sure I certainly wouldn't miss seeing our dead guy. Then how in, how in Sam Hill did he get in there? I have an idea, Sergeant. Yeah? At the beginning of the ride, there's a dark tunnel. If the murderer had been hiding in there with the body... Yeah. Now, that's impossible. Huh? Oh, well, there's only three inches clearance on each side of that tunnel. One man couldn't possibly hide there, let alone two of them. Yeah. Well, then somebody must have dumped him in there from someplace else uh, along the route. Well, there he that track lit up bright as day. <laughs> He'd sure need plenty of knife. Besides, Matty, from the time the car leaves the top of the first incline, it's going at breakneck speed. Uh, well, let's forget about how he got in the car for a minute and try to find the guy he was after. I'll bet he caught this Joe Lester. Joe Lester. You recognize the name, huh, Mr. Browden? Why, uh, no. Uh, no, there's never been any park employee named uh, 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 Joe Lester. Uh, I'll swear to that. Joe Lester. I've heard that name before now someplace. look, Sarge, can you get through with Lil and me as quick as possible? That gorilla of mine has been over there for almost an hour without any water in his cage, and he just... You better stay here, Woody. Somebody else can take care of Bongo. Mr. Browden, you know there ain't nobody but Woody and me can get near him. Anybody else try to walk into that cage Joe and Bungo Lester, tear Joe him apart? Lester. Huh? Uh, but look, uh, Nick, how about it? Uh, you need these folks any longer? I just want to ask them one question. We found a ticket stub from your show in Haley's pocket, Woody. So he must have followed Lester in there. Did you happen to notice anybody come in just before Haley? I didn't even notice him. Miss Latour? I... No. No, I didn't see the guy either. Joe Lester. By golly, I've got it. You know him, Matty? I don't know him, but I remember who he is. 
And if you think Joe Lester murdered Haley, you're out of luck, Nick. What? What do you mean? Joe Lester's been dead for 12 years. Dead? Sure, drowned while he was trying to break out of Bayside Penitentiary. His body was swept out to sea. Bongo, move back away from that cage door, you big ace. Can't you see I'm bringing you some water? Woody, let him wait a minute. I gotta talk to you. Shut up, Bongo. Uh, what's the matter, Lou? You killed him, didn't you, Woody? Me? Ah, uh, you're nuts. Don't lie to me, Woody. You know I'm too crazy about you to ever tell, but... But I gotta know the truth. Uh, whatever put a crazy idea like that in your head? Because you're the guy he's after. You're Joe Lester. <laughs> Baby, you're way off base. Joe Lester was drowned. They never found the body. And Joe Lester was in Bayside Pen 12 years ago. And you done a stretch at Bayside 12 years ago. You told me so. Well, whatever. So did a couple of thousand other guys. Oh, Woody, don't lie to me. I said I hadn't seen the guy before, but I did. I seen him talking to you during my act. Ah, uh, baby, you need glasses. That was Browden I was talking to. I tell you, I seen it. It was right after Browden left you and come back here. And your face when you saw that guy... It's like you was looking at a ghost. Ah, uh, you dreaming thing. No. No, I'm not. You're the guy he was after and you killed him. You're Joe Lester. Now, look. Didn't you hear him say that Haley followed Lester out here on a bus about 8 o'clock? What? Well, well, yeah, Woody, that, that's right. And I began right here doing a show every 20 minutes since noon, ain't I? Just like you have. Oh, that's right. It ain't you after all. Oh, honey, I was so... Hey, Woody. I, I... Shut up, Bongo. How are you, Mr. Browden? Uh, Woody, can I use your car for an hour or so? Oh, sure, Mr. Browden. Uh, here's the keys. I drove into the city for dinner, and something went wrong with my gas line. Had to come back on the bus. Yeah. You come out on the bus tonight, Mr. Browden? Yeah. Uh, Lil, you better get ready for the show. About 8 o'clock, wasn't it, Mr. Browden? Lil, what if it was? And you was talking to Woody just before. Before what? What are you getting at, Lou? I... Nothing. Excuse me. Hey, uh, she's kind of upset, Browden. You know, uh, seeing a guy fall and everything. Are you sure that's all it was? What up? Ah, uh, keep your shirt on, Bongo. I'm coming. Yeah, go ahead and take care of the gorilla, Woody. I think I have something to take care of, too. Do you really think it was Joe Lester that Haley was following? Well, Matty, you say yourself there was no real proof that Lester died in that prison break. The body was never recovered. Well, you know, Sergeant, Haley was accused of helping that engineer escape. And he must have thought that by finding Lester, he could prove his innocence. Yeah, but Lester saw Haley first and kill him to keep from being turned in. Yeah. Yeah, it figures. Yeah, but how in the world did Haley's body ever get into that roller coaster? Maybe we'll find out when we catch the killer. Well, I wired Bayside Pen for Joe Lester's description and fingerprint classifications. Good. I should be here in a couple of hours. Yeah, and once we get our hands on Lester... Mr. Carter! Nick, it's that girl from the sideshow, the gorilla trainer. She looks excited. I wonder yeah. what's up. I don't know. Carter. Mr. Carter. Yes? What is it? I, I know who he is. Joe Lester? Yeah. Up uh, a few minutes ago, he... Hey, hey, Nick, oh. catch her. She's fainted. I've got her. Give me a hand, buddy, will you? Wait, easy. Great Scott. What's the matter? Look at my hand. Hey, that's blood. You're right. She's just been shot. And she's dead. <laughs> As Nick gently lowers the body of Lillian Latour to the ground, a curious, excited crowd begins to gather around the murdered girl. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now, back to The Case of the Midway Murders, today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. In the office of John Browden, the park manager, 
Nick and Matty have been investigating the death of Lillian Latour. Confound it, Matty. Thanks to the noise of the rides in the shooting gallery nearby, we haven't found anyone who even heard the shot. Uh, I, I still can't believe it really happened. Lil and me, we was going to be married. All right, take it easy, Woody. We'll get this Joe Lester, don't worry. And when we do... Why do you always come back to Joe Lester? You said yourself the man was dead. No, Mr. Browden. Sergeant Matheson said he was reported dead. But I have a hunch we'll find him very much alive. You said it, Nick. Miss Latour knew who he was. That's why he killed her. But, But she couldn't have known. She'd have said something to me if she did. Why, me and Mr. Browden was talking to her not five minutes before... before it happened. Well, that's very interesting. Because Miss Latour's last words were that she had just learned who Joe Lester was. Well, then she must have found it out after she left us. Because there was no mention of him while we were talking, was there, Woody? Was there, Woody? Oh, oh, no, no, Mr. Browden. She never even mentioned his name. Now, that's what I want to talk to you about. You ain't going to be so busy from now on. What do you mean? From now on, I'll be doing half the work. Because you're going to give me a half interest in this whole park. Now, look, Woody. You've been bleeding me for three years. But this is too much. I'm letting you off easy, pal. What do you think the cops would say if I told them that George Haley... Come up to me just after you left this afternoon and ask me if you wasn't Joe Lester. That's a lie. It's the truth. Lil got wise, so you had to kill her, too. I didn't. It's a lie. I put on a nice act for the cops, didn't I? The poor, broken-hearted boyfriend. <laughs> That's me. And now you're going to pay for that act with half of this park. I won't do it. You've bled me for the last time. Hey, give me that door. Let go that gun. Let go or I'll break your arm. Uh, I thought you might pull something like that. I'll just turn this over to the cops, too. Now, Woody, listen. You're not interested. All I want to know is, do I get half of the park? Or do I tell the cops that you're Joe Lester? Okay. You win, Woody. I'll have the papers drawn up tomorrow morning. Hey, uh, Carter. You got the whole roller coaster to the east south. Thanks, Lim. Now, I want you to run this car as slowly as possible through the tunnel. And when I yell, stop it. Okay. Okay, but I still don't get the idea. There ain't room for anybody to hide in that tunnel. That's the same I want to see for myself, so let's get started, huh? Okay, here you go. Keep what's the idea? You think Slim's lying? I don't know, Patsy. But since Haley's body couldn't have been put in the roller coaster from outside, I can't see where else it could have been done but in the tunnel. Well, here it is. A slower, Slim. Right. You have the flashlight, Patsy? Uh-huh. Here. But I'll bet while we're fooling around here, Sergeant Matheson has already caught Joe Lester. Could be. The description and fingerprint classifications got here from the Bayside pen. And Matty said he was going to round up every park employee to see whether any of them resembled the description in any way. Then why in the world... Oh, hold it, Slim. Okay. See, Nick? It's just as Slim said. This tunnel is much too narrow for anyone to hide in. Especially if he were carrying a dead body. Patsy. Uh Uh-huh. The walls of this tunnel are bored. Well? Look at the two boards right beside us, where I'm holding the flashlight. But, why, they look as if they've been taken out and put back again. And they're going to be taken out a second time. Give me the crowbar. Yeah. Here. Oh, for heaven's sake. Oh, what's that? Sounds like the gorilla. Oh. Woody's concession is next door to the coaster, you know. Yeah. There. Well, you didn't accomplish much by taking those boards off. Look what's on the other side. Iron bars. Yeah. 
That does sort of upset my theory. What? Nick, we must be right up against the gorilla's cage. Let me put these boards down. Oh, Nick, it is the gorilla. There he is on the other side of the cage. Don't worry, Patsy. He's chained, see? Oh. Must be an exercise cage. Too oh. big for anything else. Well, Haley's body couldn't have come through there. The bars are too close together. Mm-hmm. Unless... Huh? Oh. Ah, look, Patsy. This bar's loose. Oh, Nick, Nick, Nick. Don't take that ball down. The gorilla. He's chained 20 feet away from us, Patsy. Oh. Hey, five dollars. Five dollars. What's the I'm going in the case, Patsy. Maybe you better stay out here. That's exactly what I think. But I'm going with you just the same. All right, come on, then. Yeah. Hey, oh. hey, shut it out, huh? Hello, Woody. Just the person I wanted to see. Hey, how did you two get in there? Come inside the cage and I'll show you. Get away from that door, Bongo. Get away from that door. Hi, I wish he wouldn't do Move that. Move away from that door, I told you. Yeah, that's better. Now, stay there. Now, what's the idea, Carter? I found out how you got George Haley's body into that roller coaster car. How what? Uh, no, you're wrong, Carter. I didn't kill him. Oh, yes, you did, Woody. When he came into your show, you lured him backstage and killed him with a blow on the head. Then when the roller coaster went through the dark tunnel, you turned out the lights in here and dumped the body into one of the cars through the same opening we just came through. Well, maybe that's the way it happened, but, but it wasn't me that done it. It was Brown. He's Joe Lester. Browden? How do you know? Him and me was at Bayside Penn at the same time. Browden got away on that break, and everybody thought he'd been killed. He came here, got his hands on some money, and started the spark. Go on. Well, Haley spotted him today. He asked me about him. And Browden brought him back here to talk it over. That must have been when he done it. How about Miss Latour? Lil seen Haley come in. She thought it was me he was after. And when I proved that I couldn't have been Lester, she knew Browden was. And when he learned that she knew, he had to kill her, too. Ah, Bongo, shut up. Woody, if you're a liar, it won't do you any good. Joe Lester's description and fingerprints were sent here from Bayside Penitentiary. Okay, so let him take me and Browden down to headquarters. Them fingerprints will prove he's the guy. One thing more, Woody. Why haven't you said this before? Even after you thought Browden killed your girlfriend, you kept quiet. I didn't know that he'd done it, did I? And besides... Keeping quiet has paid off pretty good for me. You mean you've been blackmailing Browden? Yeah, I've been shaking him down for plenty. But I sure ain't going to go to the chair for him. No, you're not. You're going to the chair for your own crimes, not his. Huh? You've just supplied the one thing that was lacking, Woody. A motive. You killed Haley and Miss Latour because if either of them had exposed Browden, it would have put an end to your little blackmail racket. Ah, that's crazy. You can't prove nothing like that. I think I can. Mr. Tour said that no one could go near Bongo but you and her. Well, what's that got to do with it? The killer had to bring Haley's body through this cage. But Bongo was chained up. Where he could reach the door and anybody who came through it. You had to drive him away yourself a minute ago to get in here. It's a sense that Mr. Tour didn't kill Haley and then murder herself. So that leaves only you. Okay, smart guy. So you think Bongo would have torn anybody apart that came here near except me and Lil, huh? Well, I'm going to show you that you're right. <laughs> Think he's unfastening the gorilla. Get behind me, Patsy. Yeah, get him, Bongo. Get him. Oh. Even as Nick frantically pulls the trigger, he knows that revolver bullets can never stop the 500-pound gorilla charging furiously toward him and Patsy. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now for the conclusion of The Case of the Midway Murders, today's adventure with Nick Carter, brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. In the gorilla's cage at the Idle Hour Amusement Park, Nick and Patsy realize that revolver bullets may slow up the attacking monster, but never stop him. Get through that hole in the cage where the bar's missing. Hurry! Get through, Nick. Oh. 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 Better give thanks. The gorilla's too big to squeeze through that hole. Nick, Woody's getting out of the cage door. Stay where you are, Woody. Ah. I still have a couple of bullets left. You take another step, I'm going to shoot. I'll get the park police. Right. And tell him we've got Mr. Woody Reeves where he'll be for some time to come. Behind bar. Sergeant. Yeah? I'm really glad it's over. 
Ever since I escaped from the penitentiary, I've been living in fear, paying blackmail. Yeah, it must have been pretty rugged, Browden. Or maybe I'd better call you Lester, huh? After I finish my sentence, I can really be free. You've been a pretty good citizen these past 12 years, Browden. I think the pardon board may take that into consideration. Especially since it was your first offense. Or whether they do or not, I'm glad I can clear George Haley of having had anything to do with the break. Believe me, he didn't know a thing about it. I never thought he did. But, Mr. Carter, why did you believe I was innocent of killing George after you found out that I was Joe Lester? Why, when I first mentioned that George was on Lester's trail, surprise and shock was written all over your face. But that's what I mean. I must have looked guilty. You did. And I figured you either were Lester or knew something about him. But if you'd killed Haley for that reason, you wouldn't have been surprised. Yeah. You know, there's also one thing that's bothering me, Nick. What, Betsy? How could Woody have been so sure Haley's body would be thrown out of the roller coaster so that his death would look like an accident? Woody didn't plan it that way. Huh? His only idea was to get rid of the body. Oh, by the way, Mr. Browden, you'll be glad to hear that the vet says your gorilla isn't seriously wounded. That's good. Now, I only fired at his legs, hoping to stop him. I didn't want to kill him. Yeah, but there won't be any more Beauty and the Beast show without Miss Latour to appear in the cage with him. Oh, I don't know. Maybe Patsy would like the job. What? Well, you've already made one appearance in this case. Uh, uh, I've made two appearances, Nick. My first and my last. Believe me. <laughs> <laughs> Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this same time by the Cudahy Packing Company. It is produced by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Ed Latimer plays Matty. Today's script was written by Jim Parsons and directed by Charles Skank. Original music is played by Henry Silvern. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. This is Michael Fitzmaurice saying, when minutes count, use new post-war old Dutch cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.